Infra is a ballet that I made with the visual artist Julian Opie and one of the things we really wanted to explore in this ballet was this notion of emotionality. How was it that we could um, have physical activity, have some kind of physical resonance and I love this idea of infra inferences, these um, kind of fragmented narratives, these partial views of kind of the human condition that might be quite an interesting point of departure for the ballet. Julian built this fantastic, very long aperture on the stage, almost as if we've taken out all of the bricks outside of the back of the stage and had these digital pedestrian figures um, walking back and forth and all of the dance happens underneath that framework. So there's something kind of subterranean about the piece itself. Straight, 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 straight. As I've worked more and more with the dancers of the Royal Ballet, I've realised that I can push them into working choreographically in different ways. Um, when I first started working at the Royal Ballet, I often used to come in and actually teach all the phrases of movement, and that's often a, a way in which I create choreography. I come in and I show the phrase of moving, and the dancers in some way interpret it and find a way of doing it. That's it. Increasingly, I've been able to work differently with them, and one of the things that I love to do now is stand outside uh, the dancers themselves, watch them, and use them almost as objects to think with. So I think of them in terms of kind of choreographic objects that I can mould and shape and work with. They contribute yeah, in that I offer something, they offer yeah, something back. Great if you could just do that. Yeah, like, a little, yeah. like a little jump lift. That's it, that'll work out, yeah. Point first, then flex, <laughs> then <laughs> flex. Yeah. Yeah, let's just do that a second, because I think that's, I, I, I want to add into that. So let's go to, you've got, you've got like this little turn here, you change arms, Marinella, and as you change arms, you change legs to this place. As soon as you land in that leg, this leg goes away. Okay. Yeah? More recently, we've been able to start working with improvisational structures, where actually I set up the conditions for making, and they, in some way, give a response to it that I then take into the choreography. So over the time that I've been at the Opera House, we've really started to work with multimodal ways of creating choreography, and that's really exciting. One, and then I push this hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a totally different process, choreographing at the Royal Ballet than it is choreographing, for example, my own company. The formula, the way in which we're able to build choreography is totally different. At the Royal Ballet, because the dancers are engaged in many different pieces at the same time and not exclusively working with one choreographer, you have them in snapshots of time. So you might have a couple for two hours in a week and you might have a small group for three hours and you might have a solo for 30 minutes. And so the process is very much like a jigsaw. You build these kind of units of material. I like to generate language first. So I like to almost generate what the vocabulary is for the piece. And then I like to then start to form them in little sentences. So the structure starts to emerge. And those little sentences become slightly bigger paragraphs until those bigger paragraphs become big chunks of pages that work in relationship to, as a contrast to, other big sections of pieces. And then I like then to work kind of musically with the structure and that language together. I think it's very important, first of all, to have an authority in terms of the physical language that you start with. So it's like a massive jigsaw that you then kind of piece together. Lauren Cuthbertson, one of the great skills that she has, apart from having this amazing physical aptitude and great technique and the technical ability to achieve anything that she puts her mind to, is this layer of emotionality, of intentionality that she brings to the phrases of choreography that I make for her. And there was a particular resident moment in Infra where the physical activity that she does completely deteriorates and deteriorates and deteriorates until she's left pretty much just standing there. And then she goes into a state of, a, of collapse. So you've had some elevated kind of physical language that just is reduced to its most pedestrian moment. And then I asked her to completely degenerate into crying, into just having a, a, a complete kind of meltdown, basically. And that's a very, very difficult thing to do. It's a very challenging thing to do for a, a dancer who's in one state of preparedness and has to move into another. Mm -hmm. 